Hello, this is Reza Rad uh, from Radicad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Copilot inside uh, Microsoft Fabric um, Data Factory, inside Dataflow Gen 2, which you can use it either through Data Factory or through Microsoft Power BI service. Let's go and check it out. So, what is the Copilot? Copilot is like Similar to like if you have used ChatGPT, you probably have heard around it uh, around uh, about ChatGPT. Copilot is kind of similar to that, but uh, much more powerful, especially when you are using with Microsoft tools and services. Uh, when you are using Microsoft Office 365, Power Platform, Power BI, Fabric, Microsoft has used that in a lot of places. It's AI powered assistant. That is why they call it Copilot. Uh, that can help you in accomplishing uh, a lot of tasks for example when you want to uh, book an appointment when you want to do things that um, that um, there is an assistant that can help you and uh, using copilot inside uh, fabric is quite new uh, it can help you with a lot of workloads that we have in fabric this one that i'm going to show you right now is about the usage of um, copilot inside data factory at the moment the only part of data factory that uses Copilot is the data flow gen 2, uh, but it is going to be available in other places as well. So let's go and see how this can be enabled and how this can be used inside data flow gen 2. To get started with the Copilot in um, data flow gen 2 or let's say um, data factory uh, in Microsoft Fabric, uh, first uh, the admin has to enable that settings for you, at least for now, which is uh, Copilot, it's a preview option. So you have to go to the setting admin portal, you need to have uh, the tenant administration access in the tenant settings. Um, you can just search for um, open AI um, or Copilot, both would bring uh, these two settings for you. Uh, you need to enable these two. Um, the second one is basically for those that their tenant is not in France or in US uh, at the time of uh, creating this video because that is the only two tenants available for now. Uh, but I would suggest um, enable both of these. Uh, so that is one of the uh, things you need to do. The other thing is uh, the licensing. The uh, for uh, Copilot to work, you need to have uh, either premium uh, capacity, which is P1, P2, or P3 or higher options, uh, or uh, you should have a fabric capacity, which is F64 or higher. This is not available for PPU uh, premium per user. This is not available for trial in fabric uh, because it requires quite a bit of compute power so at the moment this is only available for uh, fabric f64 or higher or p1 or higher options so once you have these settings uh, available then the next step is to go and um, create a data factory uh, data flow gen 2 which you can go to the data factory um, and then go to the workspace that you have under that licensing option uh, under that um, capacity option that I mentioned uh, then create a data flow gen 2 um, and I have a video separately for that so you can go and check it out uh, once you created the data flow gen 2 and um, then you would see the copilot option appearing here and here is the place that you can ask questions you can either click on this and this would give you options to ask questions or you can basically just um, start uh, by typing your, your question uh, for a start I also I always start with getting the data so I'll click on get data I'm using O data as a source so selecting that this is the link to my O data source which you can copy it from uh, the blog down in the description below um, then connecting to it um, this would give me a list of tables i'm going to select for this example the orders table and all tables related to that uh, so nothing so far is specific about copilot this is just the normal get data experience uh, but now that i have the tables i can start asking uh, questions from the copilot this can be simple as just describing what is happening or I can ask for some transformation. 
Now let's see how Copilot can help with the transformation. So here you see I have the customers table which has these columns. I might want to clean it and say for example I only want to keep some of the columns. So I can say uh, keep only customer ID, um, contact name and country. And you see that even though I typed everything lowercase, uh, Power Query is case sensitive. So there is a big difference between customer ID with C capital ID capital versus the customer ID all lowercase. Or the contact name, I even put a space between contact and name. You see there is no space in the column name. So even considering all of that, uh, this was smart enough to understand what I'm looking for and created a next step, which is choose column. Uh, find those columns and put it there. That is when you combine AI uh, with Power Query. So it has some understanding and it is connected to your data set and it understands that, which is quite cool. Uh, I can ask um, a little bit more complex questions such as um, um, show count of customers in each country, things like that, which would require uh, a group by actually I should have typed country I typed county but let's see that's a good example to see is it going to work or not uh, yeah it actually found that can country is the column name I'm looking for and it's uh, used the table dot group even though I didn't use let's say group by or anything like that um, so it's quite smart enough to understand that so it used uh, it created a function in line, it used the table.group to group it by the country column uh, and it gives me count of uh, each customer by that, which is quite cool. Not only you can do these kind of transformations, you can even do transformations that usually you can't do easily in the graphical interface. For example, uh, if you want to uh, change all of your columns from uppercase to be lowercase, things like that. For example, you see all of these column names are uppercase. Let's say you are interested to make them lowercase. You can just say, for example, lowercase all column names, right? Now this, we don't have a graphical interface option for that. If you wanted to do something like that, you would have added it in step and you would use that uh, table.column names uh, function for it. But it understands it, it used that, and you can see how this really worked really easily with a custom function. So it's quite smart in understanding these kind of things and you can use it for a lot of other things. It's not just in line for every query. Uh, I can even ask what is happening in here. Like for example, the transformations I've done in the customer uh, query, I can just ask it to explain. And it is going to explain all the things that happened so far here. So it is first telling me that the con uh, we are connected to the Northwind data source or data source. Uh, first, we are selecting the table, the customer table in this one, and then choosing these columns and then grouping the data, which is quite helpful, especially when you are given you have been uh, given a uh, data flow which has many queries, each query has many steps and you, you don't know what is uh, done so far on it, you can just ask this to explain it and give those information to you. Uh, I can do things that is not just related to one power query. Um, query. I can, for example, ask this to generate a new query as a merge of uh, two or more queries. I can ask this to create a custom function separately. For example, I can say create a function uh, that gives me all order details for each order ID. And this would work on creating a custom function for me. Of course, uh, if you are not familiar with custom function, there is a, a video I have done about it. Um, but here you can see how easily this created the custom function. It asks order ID as the input parameter of that. Uh, it might need um, a bit flicking around depending on what tables you are working with. But you see, this is quite helpful to generate um, but you see, this is quite helpful to generate um, a lot of interesting transformations, explaining your queries. Um, 
and many other things. So in general, um, this is a really great move to have Copilot inside Dataflow Gen 2. We don't have it yet in Data Pipeline, uh, but I'm sure that would come. There are limitations in terms of licensing, and that is of course because uh, this requires quite a bit of compute power. Um, so it's not something that can be available for free at the moment. It might change in the future, we don't know. Um, Copilot is still new, so if you start experimenting with it, you might find something that is not working which is absolutely expected uh, it's announced just very recently um, if you find anything that is not working definitely let the uh, power bi or power query team know uh, or you can just let me know in the description below i would pass on the message um, i'm totally happy with what they have done on this and I'm happy with uh, bringing Copilot anywhere else in the entire Microsoft Fabric. Uh, it just brings everything and um, uh, it just makes everything much easier. I hope you liked this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have uh, weekly videos on Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, goodbye.